Man, people really want vitamin D to do a lot of work in their lives. In fact, some studies have even tried to assign emotional labor to vitamin D. We're getting a lot of viewer questions about studies that try to link vitamin D intake to depression. Vitamin D and mood is the topic of this week's healthcare triage. If you've been hanging out with us for a while, you know that research does not support vitamin D supplements in most cases. It doesn't improve cardiovascular health, it doesn't improve musculoskeletal health, it doesn't improve all-cause mortality, and it doesn't protect you from COVID-19. But what about mood? Does vitamin D ward off the blues? To the research! There are several observational studies, some that report an effect and some that don't. A systematic review and meta-analysis of such studies reports that low vitamin D levels are associated with depression. But as you know, observational studies can only tell us so much. In the studies reporting an association, we don't know if low vitamin D causes depression, if depression causes low vitamin D, or if low vitamin D is just a co-occurring factor. By that, I mean that both depression and vitamin D levels could be a factor of some other thing entirely, like being a certain age, living in a certain location, or of smoking or using alcohol. One or more of factors like these could influence mood and vitamin D, meaning we'd find changes in both at the same time, but not because one causes the other. They could just be incidentally related. Okay, but as healthcare triage viewers, you all know all of that. You came here for answers, so let's toss the observational studies and see what we've got in the realm of randomized controlled trials. Back to the research. A 2008 study reported results from 334 overweight and obese subjects in a double-blinded, randomized, placebo-controlled trial examining the effects of vitamin D on depressive symptoms. Subjects received placebo, or 20,000 or 40,000 IU of vitamin D per week, which is quite a bit of vitamin D. Both groups given vitamin D showed small improvements in depressive symptoms after one year compared to no change in the placebo group. These improvements were most significant in individuals who had high depression scores at baseline, suggesting that vitamin D is more effective in individuals at higher risk for depression. But these data suggest an effect in an overweight and obese population, but can't necessarily be generalized to the population at large. It's also worth mentioning that the vitamin D doses were huge, and the improvements in depression scores fairly small. A 2014 systematic review and meta-analysis of such randomized controlled trials reported no overall effect with vitamin D neither worsening nor improving depressive symptoms. A subgroup analysis did reveal that supplementation had a moderate effect for individuals with clinically significant depressive symptoms, but no effect for those whose symptoms were not clinically significant. However, only seven studies were included, and the authors rated bias in most of them as either unclear or high risk, making it difficult to come to a firm conclusion. The most recently published data come from a randomized placebo-controlled trial using vitamin D and fish oil. The fish oil part of the study aims to address the role of omega-3s in depression, which is fine, but not ideal for us, since we wanted to know what vitamin D alone can do. But we'll take what we can get. In this trial of over 18,000 men and women over age 50, administration of 2,000 IU per day of vitamin D, along with the fish oil, did not significantly reduce the incidence and recurrence of depression, clinically relevant depressive symptoms, or changes in mood scores when compared to the placebo group. The vast majority of participants had no history of depression, so the idea that vitamin D effects are detectable among those with clinically significant depression may still be open for discussion. Studies on the effect of vitamin D in seasonal affective disorder have also produced mixed results. One randomized trial of 64 patients provided either 600 or 4,000 IU per day. Though we have no placebo group for comparisons, which can make a big difference, especially in self-reported psychological data, in the 37 patients who later completed a well-being questionnaire, well-being scores improved more in those from the higher dose vitamin D group. Another randomized trial administered a one-time 100,000 IU vitamin D dose to eight subjects and compared before and after depression scores to seven subjects receiving phototherapy. Results suggest that those in the vitamin D group had better depression outcomes than those in the phototherapy group. But keep in mind that this trial was tiny and also had no placebo group, and I don't think it was blinded either. And in a third randomized trial, 44 individuals were given either 400 or 800 IU of vitamin D or no vitamin D for five days in late winter. 
Data from this trial suggests that individuals in both vitamin D groups showed higher positive effect than those given no vitamin D. But other trials using 400 IU and 800 IU vitamin D supplementation reported no mood improvements. However, these also appear to lack a placebo group and were also only conducted in women, making comparisons difficult. So you might be unsurprised to hear that there isn't a concrete answer. Overall, the current evidence does not heavily support a role for vitamin D in depression, and we need more research before we understand all of the potential caveats. Depression is not well understood in general. Several factors are associated with mental health, and it is very unlikely that vitamin D supplementation is a panacea for any condition. It could be one of many avenues for helping some people who suffer from depression, but we've got a lot of work to do in order to unravel the relationships between all of the potentially relevant factors. Hey, did you enjoyed this episode? You might enjoy this other episode on the utility of temperature screening during COVID. We'd appreciate it if you'd like the video and subscribe to the show down below and also go on over to patreon.com slash healthcare triage where you can help support the show even during a global pandemic. We'd especially like to thank our research associates, James Glasgow, Joe Sevitz, Josh Gister, and Michael Chin, and of course, our Surgeon Admiral Sam.